AIS. Welcome to week four of the six and six campaign. This week, I am focusing on exam number six, according to NCARB's listing of the ARES. And this exam is called construction and evaluation. For those that have either missed the first few weeks or are just tuning in or have been through it through from the beginning, welcome to week four. And I can't wait to get into this exam and start to tell you what exactly is covered on construction and evaluation and how to study for it. So let's get started. So week four, as I mentioned, is focusing on construction and evaluation. This exam, when you look at the ARE 5.0 handbook, starts to touch in on not only the elements of what the architect's role are in the construction process, but also all the way from pre-construction up to post-occupancy evaluation of projects. And what's really critical in this exam is the role of the architect. They try to pose questions that are framed more for the contractor or for the owner, but your role as the architect is really fundamental in terms of understanding all of these topic areas. So the four critical sections, as you can see here, are pre-construction activities, construction observation, administrative procedures and protocols, and project closeout and evaluation. So as I mentioned, this goes from pre-construction all the way through construction until you get to substantial completion, then final completion, and even post-occupancy evaluations. Just like all the other exams, the 5.0 handbook outlines exactly what to expect. So for this particular exam, there are 95 items, which is a little less than the last two that I did. The test duration is three hours and 15 minutes, and the appointment duration is four hours. And you can see the breakdown of the questions at the bottom, and you'll notice that the vast majority is in the middle two sections, so construction observation and administrative procedures and protocols. What's also critical in this exam, when you start to look into the end of the handbook and you look at the reference matrix, is that this exam really deals with contracts. So what do I mean by contracts? Those are the contract documents that AIA actually produces that you can use to maintain that level of ownership and control between the owner, architect, contractor, or whatever semblance of structure that your particular project delivery type deals with. So CE, which is construction and evaluation, you'll look at the orange, almost all of the contracts are covered in this exam. So primarily we're focusing on A101, A201, AB101, and a few others that I'll show you in a second. But before I do that, I wanted to let you know exactly what to expect. So thus far this week, I've gone through the Black Spectacles videos and you'll notice that there's only 11 hours, which compared to last week's 36 was a lovely surprise. But after going through those videos, I really, it really honed in the fact that these videos are definitely an introduction to the exam. They are not a holistic review and you definitely have to supplement it with other types of ARE prep providers and other resources. So after looking through these exams, and I'm currently going through the flashcards, there's about 200 of them, and these are really, as you can see, talking about contract documents, what, what the series are, how they relate to things, and you'll start to notice that when you look into the series, A series deals with contracts between owner and contractor, B series deals with contracts between owner and architect, and so on. And a lot of these are really critical to know backwards and forwards because they're not just going to ask you what is the A series. They're going to ask you based on B201 or so on and so forth, how would you react to a particular situation? So then when you start to look into the AIA website, you'll notice that AIA contract documents provides a whole list of all of their contract agreements. And there's a lot of them. So it's really handy to look at the ARE 5.0 handbook to get an understanding of which ones you actually need to know for this exam and how to learn them. And you'll notice that when you go into it, you do have to actually purchase them if you're using them in your firm, but they have little handy dandy free sample previews that I will be using, as well as some books that I'll touch in on Wednesday. And then when you scroll down, you'll notice that there's also a great resource called the Contract Relationship Diagrams. When you go into that link, you get to this page, and it's somebody who's clearly enjoying their time as an architect. You go to click to view PDF, and this is what you get. So this is what I am referencing as my main study material with regards to 
realizing which contracts come into play for which project delivery type. And what do I mean by project delivery type? So this exam talks about the primary project delivery type, which is design, bid, build. And then it even goes into other things like small projects, um, construction manager as advisor, um, construction manager as contractor, and so on and so forth. Design build is one that you might all recognize just from studio. So when you look at the conventional design bid build, you'll notice that all the relationships between the players in a construction process are outlined with numbers and the actual type of contract. So this is how I'm getting a framework for which contracts go into what project delivery type. And then I'm going into each of these contracts and I will start to learn them backwards and forwards. According to what I've been seeing on the ARI 5.0 um, community, the key contract to know for this exam is A201. This is the general conditions of the contract for construction. So this is all of the regulations and all of the rules that correlate to the owner, architect, contractor, and subcontractors. And apparently there's a lot of questions on this one, so I'll be sure to go into that in detail. As I mentioned, some of the other contracts you have to know are A701, which are your instructions to bidders, B101, which is the standard agreement between owner and architect, C401, which is the standard agreement between architect and consultant, and so on and so forth, even some from the G series, which deal with change orders, how to actually apply and do a certificate for payment, how to do a continuation sheet, and how to do a certificate of substantial completion. Because the architect actually has authority in terms of determining when a project is, quote, substantially complete. So that's a really important thing to know. What actually makes a building ready to be lived in? When can you actually tell the owner that it's substantially complete, quote unquote, and all that's left are a few paint jobs and other things? And that's really critical. But in addition to all of these contracts and in terms of actually understanding the legality of the construction process, because don't forget, you can get into a lot of different and potentially problematic legal situations if anybody goes beyond their contract. And that's when you get into actually going to court and litigation and all of that unfortunate stuff. So you want to avoid that. The other thing that I wanted to touch on for this exam is that it kind of relates to the exam that I did last week, which is project development and documentation, in that construction and evaluation still touches on those building systems and how to actually maintain thermal and moisture control in your enclosures. And specifically, the architect has to perform site visits. I'm sure a lot of you have gone on some site visits with your AIS chapters or with the firms that you've interned at. And on those site visits, you have to be able to know if the contractor is doing things appropriately, not necessarily by the contract documents, but so that it's guaranteed to come to completion. So on this best practices manual that Hammer in Hand has, which I highly recommend for anybody studying, you'll notice this is a best practice manual that starts to touch in on all of those details. So it goes from flashing to sealant joints to windows and doors, rain screens, envelopes, roofs, basements, crawl spaces, and structure. I'm going to zoom in on a few to show you what the pages look like. So for flashing, you'll notice that they have some critical dimensions. They even start to talk about where to install it, some important points of installing, and then some more diagrams and critical um, key sections. And this is really helpful in case they give you any sections on the exam or in case you really just have to detail that and point, per, for instance, on a question. Then you can look at sealant joint design. They start to tell you how sealant joints actually react to different weather conditions, which is important to understand that compression and contraction come into play. And then you can even look at air sealing. So where do you seal the building to ensure that there's no extra air or moisture seeping into your construction? Where do you actually, how do you deal with parapet walls, which is on the roof? How do you deal with the venting and the roofing therein? Like this is really critical when you are the architect on site, making sure that everything's going to code and making sure that you will not get sued for whatever you designed and making sure the owner actually has everything going as they intended it to be. Then they even go into basements. So for new construction, I really like this diagram. It's a nice axon that's colored so you can really get into what are the details in a basement condition? How do you manage that moisture control? What are all the layers that go into typical construction? And then last but not least, some of the crawl spaces. What are things to look for in crawl spaces? Um, how do you actually, what, what do you need to know before building or retrofitting a crawl space? 
And that's all really cool. And then they also talk about stair framing and other things. What types of wood might you use where and all that good stuff. So this exam, all in all, is definitely less in terms of the actual content and design ideas that you have to get wrap your head around in comparison to the last three exams that I did. So I started with exam number three, which was programming and analysis, went into project planning and design, last week did project development and documentation, and this week I'm doing construction and evaluation. I'm gonna let you guys know how this goes because a few people that I've been looking at on the community did construction and evaluation after um, practice management and project management because those two that I'll be doing over the next and the last two weeks of this campaign also deal with contracts and all of that more administrative side of being an architect. So I'll let you know how it goes doing this one first, but maybe at the end of the campaign I recommend flipping it. We'll see, but I hope that you all get a better understanding of what this particular exam is, and I can't wait to share a few more resources and go into more of the books that I recommend you to study on Wednesday. Thanks for tuning in, guys. See you Wednesday.